Well, chaps, uh, the first of what might be a few sort of smallish videos, the so-called tour guide crickies, which is... Uh... Oh, forget it. Um, for much of my day-to-day -day, uh, updates on Facebook, I should really have gone on to Twitter. I loathe Twitter. Maybe I would have had more people interested. Uh, the random ramblings of a university graduate. 15 years ago in September, I started university. But I've been using it, um, I sometimes refer to uh, this DK World War II day by day because it, you can't really see it, but it's kind of got a little column with the day. Uh, and I, I don't solely rely on it for history, it sort of presents things as newspaper headlines are. And in the little column, it will break it down like so. What day is it today? The 13th, isn't it? So you get. Um, Congress in the US votes to give 1.8 million, no, 1800 million to the army. And tomorrow, totally unnoticed by anyone else, the first inmates arrive at Auschwitz. And it wasn't a death camp at that point. I think that started in 1942. Uh, that's for another video um, in 2022, if as a species we make it. So on June 13, uh, Winston Churchill, he who has been in the news this week, uh, flies over for the last time for a meeting of the Anglo-French uh, War Council with Deladier and Vagon and all the others at um, Tours. I don't know why I bother doing these videos when all of a sudden, I think it's like when I stand on the tour bus and you've got a bunch of people looking at you and you think, shit, do I know what I'm talking about? You will say no. But guess what? I got nine views on my 51st Highland Division video from uh, that finally got uploaded this morning. And that's approximately eight more than I usually get. Um, you know, the situation is beyond grim now. The Germans are only a few miles uh, by all accounts from Paris and they've taken areas in the northeast because they're still sort of, you know, firming up. And they're closing down on Le Havre. Love. Churchill would have thought a great personal risk flew over uh, German lines to see the war council and essentially said to him, you know, chaps, I know it's not a good situation, it's beyond stupid, but, you know, carry on the fight in North Africa if you can, because, you know, they've got... Um, <laughs> Algeria. I had Morocco in my head and then realised that was Spanish. So, you know, he's like, carry on the fight, please. <laughs> you know, uh, and Raygond, I like, I, I say I like to think, I imagine him, he's got tears in his eyes for some reason. I'm not saying that all French are like that, but his country's fallen into bits around him. Uh, said to Churchill, you know, uh, do you mind if we make an armistice, armistice with, your cons or with British consent? And Churchill sort of went, no, <laughs> you know, and you think, well, would it have made any difference? Uh, less French men probably would have died, of course, but armistice on June 13th or 22nd, it didn't make any difference uh, to the war situation. Is this Churchill being a bastard? Maybe, but the man was a, he, he loved France. He spoke the language with his nasal, you know, parlay through Francais and all this stuff, but he loved France, he really wanted it to carry on. I mean, after the armistice, uh, around the time of the uh, no, around this week anyway, Brooke was sent over the bloody Brittany to try and create some kind of weed there, and it was just an absolute disaster. It's a British war effort so far in a nutshell. Uh, I mean, most of the troops left in France, and we forget after Dunkirk there were still a great many uh, troops, tens of thousands, and now at the harbour ports there's no one really organised and fighting the Germans, apart from the French, and even that is collapsing our rate of knots, and now the French in the very south of the country are having to make most of bloody Mussolini. So it was optimistic of Churchill for the French to do anything, and of course after the armistice, uh, you know, French territory in Africa effectively passed into Fichy hands. And they were Nazi Germany you know, behind a French flag. 
Churchill at some point, and I forget when, probably around about the time of Dunkirk, had this bizarre idea of merging the two countries, Britain and France, essentially take France into Britain, as if this was sort of make hit sit up and go, fuck me, now we're attacking Britain directly. Uh, I'm not sure how it would work, it's on the internet somewhere, but essentially the two countries would be, France would become Brit part of Britain. Would... <laughs> Would we have given it back to the French after the war? Maybe we would have wanted to keep it on because the empire's fallen around, but Churchill was desperate. And um, the bad man of history was doing his best to try and keep the world going. But this isn't about Churchill, just his efforts. Uh, at the same time, Operation... <sighs> why do I bother? Why, why do I bother? Is he going to stop talking? No, we're going to carry on. Operation Cycle, that's it. For the bloody... I'm not reading the page, honestly. Uh, if I was, it would sound a lot more coherent and not like the drunken ramblings of a fool. I'm not drunk, but I'm just saying it sounds like I am. Uh, you can't get drunk on this bloody stuff. I mean, I like cars, but I have been drunk on cars, but, but for some reason, drinking African. Anyway, fuck it. Pardon my French, ladies. Uh, lady chaps. Um... Operation Cycle, the evacuation of British Expedition A Force troops and some French troops on the half completes with almost 11,000 British troops evacuated, and that now means that's essentially those left at Western ports all the way down. Uh, Operation Aerial, which is the last evacuation of BEF and French troops, will start on the 15th. So, uh, in history, that is, where is it? Saturday. Uh, 80 years ago, Monday come in, and it will carry on actually three days after the armistice. Now, at the same time, two million citizens have more or less fled Paris. Marshal Patin will declare it open city. Where is it? And that will lead us, if you pardon me, this is terribly rude, but I want to get my, f I want to get it right. My hair is probably useless. And don't forget, of course, the Americans are not in the war yet, even though after a while the Germans will start torpedoing, uh, torpedoing freighters and even a, um, even a uh, destroyer, the James Reuben, ja uh, was it James Reuben James? Yeah, today, General Fagan declared Paris open city. I mean, could you imagine Paris a battleground? Four years later, the German commandant of Paris is told by Hitler to destroy it before he leaves the city. He wants all of this city raised to the ground as a sort of middle finger to the Allies. But the, the commandant... German commander anyway in Paris said to himself I can't let this beautiful city go the way of the dodo no fuck it ignore Hitler and I think he got taken prisoner which might have been just as well because anyone that defied Hitler at this point of the war was liable to be shot or hanged and uh, this would have been after the July 20 plot so don't give Hitler the excuse just don't do it but that's all in the future so that's June 13 uh, <laughs> Wikipedia is useless. You get the day-to-day -day thing, and it tells you that on this day, Bobby Clark, a drummer, was born. He died in 2014. An Indian politician was born, M. M. Ramit Ulla, who died also in 2014. And on this day, a French-born film director and producer, Georges Fitzmaurice, died at the age of 55. So, that's your June 13. Onwards.